Hello and welcome to another tutorial. So this time we're going to be continuing to add a little bit to the sim style AI setup, but the focus this time is going to be less on the sim specific behaviors, but on setting up something called an AI blackboard. So a blackboard is a way for an AI being able to keep track of information. It also is a way where you could have multiple AIs share information. So there's multiple uses there for them. So let's dive on in. So I'm going to set this up as something where it'll be its own separate system. So we'll have our blackboard set up. And within that, what we're going to do, script, and we will have firstly a Blackboard manager. So I'll have a central object that is sort of managing the issuing and maintenance and things like that of Blackboards. So I'm going to create an empty object here, position it at the origin, and that will be our Blackboard Manager. So I want to set up a couple of different setups here for these Blackboards. So I want to be able to have an AI be able to store information into it. So I want an, a Blackboard that is specific to each AI, but I also want a household Blackboard. So that's something where we want to have shared ones and we want to have an individual one. So this is going to help us define sort of the, the interfaces that we have a little bit. So I'm going to close most of these. And then what we'll do is we will set up so that we have our Blackboard Manager. So a couple of interfaces that are going to need for this. I definitely want to have something where I can go, okay, well, public, I'll make this void for now. Uh, create blackboard or get individual blackboard. Get individual blackboard and get individual blackboard. I will make it that you provide a game object for that. So that'll be the requester. And then I want to also have one that is a get shared blackboard. And that's going to need to have some kind of unique ID. So unique ID. So that's pretty good for those interfaces. I am also going to set up so that this is a singleton and I'm going to do my usual approach of stealing from an existing one uh, and just transferring that over because it's just the easiest way to do it. So, okay, that's good. Now, what I want to be able to then do is I need my Blackboard to be a particular class. So I'm going to create a class here, Blackboard. And this will have a few different things in it, but for now we'll just have it as an empty class. So get individual blackboard and we'll have get shared blackboard. So then what I will be able to do is I'm going to maintain here a dictionary, one where the key is a game object. And this will be the individual blackboards. And then I also, <laughs> So autocomplete, it's it gave it a it gave it a shot out to visual. Um, it was a it was a good shot autocomplete. Uh, so we have individual and shared blackboards now. So get individual blackboard. Well, I want to check just in case it already exists. So if individual blackboards contains key for the requester, then I just return that particular one. Uh, and then I would add it so I can actually do this a little bit better. If it doesn't contain it, then I do individual blackboards. Uh, so that 
not goes here. And so if it doesn't contain it, then what I will do is create it at that point. So individual blackboards, requester is a new blackboard. Similar thing here for the getting of a shared blackboard. Difference is it's accessing it via a slightly different method. So if it contains those, and these change to shared blackboards. The actual Blackboard Manager doesn't need to do a huge amount. Uh, this is keyed off of an integer. So, okay, good. We've got some basic stuff set up there. So common AI base, I want it to be able to have serialized field int household ID. I'm just going to set to one. General. And this is something where that might be, there might be different particular values we configure and set there. I'm just having it set in the inspector just because that will be the easiest option for now, depending upon how you were structuring your household factions, things like if that, that would actually change where you get that ID from. And we could have multiple shared ones. So you could have a shared one for a family or a group or a team. You could have one that's for a household. You could have one that's for the village. There's a lot of different layers to these uh, that we could be working with. So, okay, that's good. So in terms of stuff that gets stored in the Blackboard. Now this is where things get eh, not necessarily difficult, but where we need to make some decisions. So we could go super, super, super generic with this. And like the most generic thing I could do is I could have something where it is dictionary, object, object, da. Because everything in C Sharp is based off of object. So I could literally have this where it is a thing that is storing everything. But that's not great. That's actually going to be not good for performance because we're constantly going to be converting stuff from that super, super generic base type to the specific type. So we're doing a lot of um, these translation operations of boxing and unboxing stuff, and that's not good for performance. Blackboard, for it to be usable and used a lot, we want it to have good performance. So what I wanna do with this is actually a little bit of a hybrid approach. I want to have it that it has some optimized ones for storing our common types, integers, bools, floats, strings. They're common types, maybe even game objects as well. Um, and you could add in an, any number of common ones like of that. That way then it can store stuff without doing those slower operations. And then I also want to have stuff where, okay, there is just a generic if we want to be able to kind of store anything where we can. So what I am going to do also is I'm going to have an e blackboard key because this is something where, again, I could use strings, but then we could make typos. I could have variables, but then that makes it, and that, and that is not a bad option, um, but it's a bit slower for sort of setting up. So I could have like const static variables within a class. I think an enum is an ideal option, it maps to an integer behind the scenes. It's really fast to look up and compare. So I think using an enum for this is going to be the way to go. So what I would end up having within this is a dictionary blackboard key. So then we would have our integer set. So integer blackboard. So we set up that. Now we're going to then have one for floats, one for booleans, one for strings. Now the downside with having the split up set up is we need to remember the key where it's actually logically being stored. You know, is it an integer float? So there is potential still for error there, but at the cost of performance. And I think there's a few safety things we can put in to make this work. Um, so I'm gonna actually rename that to int values 
float values, bool values, and string values. Now, that's a decent set of ones. I think we should also chuck in vector3, because I think vector3 is a common one that we would have. And I think also a game object. Just, and you know, these are things where I'm setting up a lot of different ones to begin with. And the main reason I'm doing that is just so that you have, if you're using this in your own projects, you've got a really solid base there of a lot of the things you need. Um, so there's further ones that you could add in. Well, game object values. There's definitely further ones you could add in. Uh, but the idea is I just want to make it that you've got a really good sort of starting set there if you're using this so that you don't immediately, the first thing you have to do is go and add in extra ones. So we're going to have float, all string. And this is something where like these type specific ones, um, you could then you know, eventually add in further ones if you're using a lot of the generic one. So I'm going to then have a dictionary, blackboard key object, and this is going to be generic values is what I'm going to call this. So that's good. So then how I want to structure this is I need getters and setters. So I'm going to need something like, and what I'll do is have a set int. I also could, actually to an extent, get away with having set. We provide the key. And so we have a set like that. I could then have one where this has float values. So this will actually work because it will be able to discern based upon the type. So C sharp, different parameters like of this, it can distinguish between them. So I can have bool, I can have string, So we don't need to have it have exactly the same name. Oh, sorry, we don't need to have it have different names, which is good. Makes it a little bit neater and cleaner interface wise. Uh, then we have a couple more ones where we have our vector three and game object. So vector three and we have game object. So, okay, that's a pretty good set for those. Then the generic ones will do last, because then we need getters. And I want to structure the getters in a very specific way. So what I want to do is because, again, we want to sort of factor in safety with this. So I want to have, as one interface, a try get. We provide the blackboard key and out int value. So what this can do is it can check if that key exists. So we would go, okay, well, if int values contains that key, and what I could do is if it contains the key, then we return true and value is equal to that. So otherwise, if we haven't managed to retrieve it, we do need to return false like that, but we still have to give a default value there for this. So this is one where what I could have is similar to what we have for things like the uh, player prefs for getting values. I could have a default value that it will return, and it just goes value is equal to default. So this ends up being a little bit more involved, as we can see for all of this. So we'd have the try get, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this down here. Now we could have a get that's just a direct thing. Now this is a bit more challenging because if I do something like int get and I do blackboard key like that and I return in values, that's fine. But as soon as I do something like this, if I go for one that returns a bool and we go bool values, it can't actually tell. So you can have multiple functions where the parameters are different types, but you can't have multiple functions where the return value is the only thing that is different. So that's an important thing with this. So we can have our try gets, we could have multiple of those, but for things like our gets, we actually have to make that get int. Uh, so that's a, a bit of a limitation there we do need to be aware of. Um, now there are sort of more convoluted ways where we can potentially work around that, um, but they can result in code that's a little bit harder to read and a little bit harder to maintain. So my preference is generally going to be, uh, we, we know what type it's going to be typically anyway, so using something like the get int. Uh, would be would be sort of my recommendation there with that. Uh, this is something where I would check if it doesn't contain the key. Then in this case, I am going to go for throwing a I think missing field exception, or we could take a look at. Um, invalid, so there's also ones for argument exceptions. Uh, so we could then be logging out there, would not find key, could not find value or key in integers int values. Yes, so we're being clear. So it's good with this to have those bit of extra safety checks. It does mean we're doing a contains every time. And this is something where you could have it that this is only on in development builds and you turn this off in, you know, release builds would absolutely be an option. So now we have to go and add these in for every single one of these. So it is a bit of a lengthy process with setting this stuff up. So blackboards have a lot of boilerplate code. Um, and in this case, we have more boilerplate code because of the fact that we are going for something that is going for a bit of a hybrid approach. That is having particular values uh, be of particular types be stored in something that they'll be a little bit faster to work with and avoid some slower operations. So it's something where the downside is we have more more code that we have to be setting up. The upside is we get better performance. Uh, so that is that is just one of the things to factor in with this and it's also part of the reason why I wanted to make sure uh, I'm setting up all of this stuff to begin with so that you don't have to, out of the box, be running into setting lots of things like of this. It saves you having to do all of that. Um, and obviously, as you add in each new type, it's then just transferring over this stuff for the particular ones. Uh, now, the advantage with this is we also, you know, we've got these large storage things that we've got of these dictionaries. You could have dedicated ones for specific things. So similar AI blackboards I've worked with have done stuff where it might be a case of they have um, a particular data structure that is, here's all of the targets that the character can see. So there's lots of things that we can do like of that as well. Um, so it's really down to whatever our particular needs are for the case. So we've almost got all of our different ones set up. 
Yeah, we can't map to string.empty, so we have to actually just map it to an empty string like of that. And then we're almost there, we just have our vector three. And this is a lot more parameters than we need, but it's something that will cover us for all of our use cases. And we could also, you could control when a new AI is created, for example, it's blackboard that it starts off with could actually be preceded with values from say its faction. Uh, so that's something that also seen done uh, in particular games is where when a character spawns in, the faction blackboard, a version of that gets passed over and so the AI gets an awareness there from uh, that particular setup. So again, this is one where we can't map it to that. So we can make it that that is a new vector three. Like that. Actually, no, that might not even be able to be done. Yeah, so it's not able to map to that. So the vector three one, it's gonna always have to have a value provided there, which is a little bit of a shame. Uh, but there are limitations like that that you will hit into at times. Uh, so we have our game object version now, and then that's all of the specific type ones. Then we get to the generic type one. So the generic type one is one that I added in because it's useful for us to be able to have it, but it's something where we do want to be a little cautious. If you find you're using the generic type one a lot, that likely means there are additional ones you need to be adding in. So additional types uh, that you're adding in. So just watch for that. If you do find that you're using the generic type a lot, add in a specific type entry. So, okay, so far so good. So then for the set, and this will be the, I will actually have this be a specific name. So this will be set generic key. And then this will be object value. And so this would do generic values key like that. Uh, now we might be able to set this up where it is something like a bat. So it can be provided in with any type. We do just want to check and make sure Unity's happy with that. Um, the way the generic type things work, you do need to be a little, little cautious and it is good to just test them. Uh, and that would be something where I'd want to do a test, probably down here, just to make sure this is going to work, of doing something like this set generic, and I should be able to say, you know, okay, E blackboard key. I'm going to just put in a temporary one called time and set that to this. So anything should work, which it does. So that's good. So we can get rid of time from there. Now, the public void, well, we'll have the get version. So I'll have T get generic blackboard key. So we would need to do similar to what we've got here. So we have our generic values, check here. Now the generic values is there as an object. So we would need to do something like as t. With this, it's not going to be able to work because it needs some level of constraint for casting it. Now, if I said, okay, well, where t is a class, that will work. But what if t wasn't a class? What if t was a structure, something like of that? So we can't necessarily do that. We might be able to do some a older star cast like that. Um, but this is something that might be a little fragile. It's something where we will want to test with it and see how it works. 
uh, and we'll do our try get as well. So this again is going to be t again. We check our generic values, uh, and so this comes t has the default value there. This again, we do that same casting. So it should mean we've got something that can store these individual things. So let's move some stuff over to this. Let's move over things like the energy and the fun level. So let's have character stat energy, character stat fun. And let's chuck in some other stuff because, well, for characters currently using an object, it might be nice to know what they're currently using. Um, so we'll track the character. And I would recommend doing sort of a bit of a naming like of this, a so character object in use, or maybe focus object is a better term for it. So that's good. So now I want to have my AIs get their blackboards and start using these particular things. So in a wake, we can't really do this. We want to be waiting until we're in start. So we'll be able to do a blackboard manager. So blackboard manager and instance. And then we would say we want to, I think it was a request. For the blackboard or get individual blackboard. So we get individual blackboard and those are both public. So we give a game object so it knows who's requesting it. I think that would actually be better as a mono behavior. So I'm going to change that to a mono behavior. I think makes more sense. Uh, for tracking the requester there. That way then it's tied to the component, not the game object, because you could have multiple things on the AI that wants individual ones. So do this. So, okay, we can then have our blackboard. So we could have public blackboard, individual blackboard. Go get and protected set like that. So, okay, we've got our individual blackboard. I want to then set, and I want to set our fun and energy level. So, okay, I want to set energy, and our energy gets set to current energy. Or we could set it to our default, which is going to be our initial energy level. And then we do the same thing with fun. So we set our initial fun level. So character stat fun. That's going to mean I actually am going to get rid of a couple of things. Those can still initialize the displays there. But I'm going to Get rid of those for now, because again, I want to see what stuff breaks. So here where I'm updating the fun. What would be nice is if this setting here actually maps to the get and set of the stuff in the blackboard. And I can actually do that. So these where I had these as properties, what I could do is when we go to get fun, it could return individual blackboard, get int, and, well, sorry, not get int, get float, blackboard key, fun. I'm just going to actually put this on the one line because it doesn't need to be split. And then set would be individual blackboard, set. We set the fun value to whatever value is being provided in. So now we're presenting the exact same interface we did before. The difference is it's now going via the Blackboard. So that information is stored elsewhere. So our character stat here 
becomes energy, like if that. So all of what we were doing here, where we did current fun and current energy, these stay exactly the same. I'll move these down to here though. So they have to be, we have to set up the blackboard first. But now that information is stored in its blackboard. So let's check and see that just with that change, nothing should really be different. Everything should still work. It should see stat changes. So it heads over here. Stats are changing. So it's going via the blackboard now though. So there's very little in the way of changes there, but everything is update up to date in the blackboard. So that's good. We can do more than this though, because we wanted the household blackboard as well. So the blackboard, household blackboard, get, check that set, and we want to request that as well. So we'll go blackboard manager instance, uh, get shared blackboard, give it the household ID. Now, where this is useful is if we look at the stuff that we can store in the Blackboard. So we have the ability to store, you know, game objects, ability to store bulls, things like of that. Characters can store their focus object. Uh, so that is something where when we set our current interaction, that would actually be something where current interaction, I could take this and change that to behave a lot like this, where what that's doing is, okay, individual blackboard, well, the key is now the focus object. So when I set the current interaction, I could go in this, in this case, I'm gonna use my generic one. So I'm gonna say get generic, and that's going to be a base interaction. In this case, I don't need to provide that because it's already got the particular bit of information. So this will be a good way of testing, is our generic set working? Um, again, if we're doing a lot of interactions, that's something where we could actually do that uh, via a dedicated type setup. Key thing is we just wanna see, does this still work? Because this is a good test for the casting. So this is what we were hoping we would find out is if this is going to be working properly. So it couldn't find it. And if we go and take a look at what we were doing, that we'll find is because we did a set we needed to for this, because it's a generic one, we have to do it as a set generic. So if that's the only error we've got, that's actually pretty good because that means it'll be casting uh, correctly. And that's the big thing that's a potential risk with this is whether it's managing to cast okay. So it's still managing to say that it couldn't find a particular value. And that's likely because we're reading from the particular thing. So this is one where when we set up, we had the try get. This is where I would use that try get because current interaction can validly have nothing stored in it. So what I would do is, okay, we'll have base interaction. Uh, we'll call that interaction is equal to null. And we'll do uh, try get. So we'll do f individual blackboard try get, and that actually should be a try get generic, just so it's very clear. We likely could get away with just using try get, but I think good to make it clear that there's the, the difference there. So we wanna try and get a focus object. Uh, we should actually be able to avoid indicating the type there. So that can go to the interaction. And the default value is null. And in this case, we can kind of 
just return that interaction because if it goes for the default, that's actually okay. That's kind of the behavior that we want. It's exactly what the behavior was before. So let's test with that now. Now there could still be an issue where the casting might be a problem. Um, this is about sort of, and part of the reason I wanted to have some stuff going through the generic and that's working. It's managing to retrieve it. So that's good. Now, again, this is something where the generic we do know is going to be slower. That is a given thing. The generic will be a slower interface. So we must be mindful of that. So, okay. So far, so good. We've got a bunch of stuff going into the blackboards. I want to actually now have it that there's, we're using this for some shared information. So, cause we're not doing anything much really with, with this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a indication of, okay, well, there being multiple objects that could be in use and an AI checking and saying, is someone else using this? So this is where that household blackboard comes in. So, okay, I want to think about this of how best to store this. I want something where we have, and I'll put these down here, household objects in use. So objects in use is going to be a list of our base interactions. Now I could wrap this in an entire class, things like of that. And that might be a good thing to potentially do. We're going to just test and see if we can just store a list in via our generic interface. That's going to be what we're sort of aiming to do here. So when we're doing the setting, I'm going to bring that down here because what I want to also then do is, okay, I want to go, okay, well, household blackboard, try and get a generic. And what I'm trying to get is a list base interaction objects in use. And that will be null. So I'm trying to get the objects in use. That will go out to that and the default will be null. So we're doing a set. We've got the objects in use. So there's two possible things that could be happening here. One, we are setting the value to something that's not null. We're saying that we're using something or we could be setting the value to null, in which case we're saying we're not using something. So how that changes things is like this. If value is equal, is not equal to null, then are we starting to use something? If we are starting to use something, then what we would do is, well, first we need to check if objects in use ended up being null, which it could validly be, and at the very beginning, it would be null. We're gonna create it. Then if objects in use contains value, in particular, if it doesn't contain it, then we add it back, we add it in. And only in that case would I then go and update the generic. So only then would I do household blackboard set generic and we set our blackboard key household objects in use to objects in use. Only in that case would I do it. So we've got need to create list. not already in list, add and update the blackboard. That's because we started to use something. Otherwise, we've stopped trying to use something. So in this case, it's only gonna be valid if objects in use is not null. So if objects in use is not equal to null, then we would do objects in use, we remove it, 
And I'm going to check if that remove succeeded. Again, minimizing the amount of updating that I'm doing. So, attempt to remove and update the blackboard. F changed. So this way, I can be registering what things are currently stored there, so what things are being used, what things are not being used. Because then what an AI can do when it's going and scoring things here is I can get from the household blackboard, get generic, I can retrieve the objects in use. Uh, so what I could do is I would also actually do this as a try get generic. So I'd have the list of base interaction objects in use is null. We retrieve it into that and the default is null. Because that allows me to down here now, if that interaction can't be performed, that's fine. We can also check if objects in use is not equal to null and objects in use contains that interaction, then we skip it. Skip if someone else is using. Now, I know the objects themselves can have limits, but we might also want the AI to have this approach of like, well, if someone else is using it, then we don't use it. Uh, and I might actually put that as a setting here. So a pool avoid if others using or avoid in use objects. Avoid in use objects. Which I'm going to set to true. So we can just check that. That just means that you know you could have an AI that's like, nope, it's going to. It matters to me if someone else is already using it. They might want to always be keeping their distance, or you could have something where the AI is like, oh, someone else is using it. I'm going to go and use that. So again, it allows layers for conveying personality there for the characters. So that should mean we can have stuff where if someone else is using it, it will skip it. So I'm going to put a breakpoint on that because we want to make sure that it's working. We're doing some reasonably, it's not super complex logic, but it's working with data in ways that is absolutely more complex. Uh, without a doubt, absolutely more complex. So let's run this. We want to see if that code path is executing. Now we've only got one AI, so let's run it again, but we're going to chuck in a second one. Move our second AI over here. Let's just see. It's always important when you set up things, make sure the code parts are actually getting executed. So I'm going to, so it did have avoid objects in use is true. Objects in use has two things. And so we can see there's ones being used there. That looks good. Now, something we do want to watch for and make sure is happening is that when an object is ceased to be being used, um, that we get a notification for that and it does properly update. So here, objects in use, there's five things. It's going to, ah, and so this is an important thing where it's going to set the value and because it's trying to set it to null, this is something where it gets a little tricky, uh, where we need to look at clearing the previous values. This is one where it made a lot of sense of like, yeah, of course we'd use null. So what we would have to do is something where we retrieve the previous focus object. So it does make this a little bit slower. Um, previous interaction. So we get it. And then down here, we're actually checking if it contains that. So it's a little bit different how we actually have to work with this. And this is why that objects in use list was continuing to grow because we were trying to remove a null, which obviously there's no nulls in the list. 
So we'll run that again. This way we'll be able to hopefully see that changing and being set to a null. So previous interactions, we can see it was using the TV. That is actually there in that list. It removes it and then it goes and updates it. So what we should find now is that over time, that list doesn't end up growing to a really high level because that was what was happening was that that list was growing and ballooning out in size. Uh, so we'll put a breakpoint here just so we can see again and make sure because they've done a few interactions now, we should be able to see uh, if there is a case of that ballooning in size and it shouldn't do so we can see yep there's only there's none in use at the moment which does make sense there should be none in use at the moment uh, and now there is one in use so again that makes sense as they finish with one so that does mean that in some cases they can both try and head over to the same thing because they're updating at the same point in time uh, but we've got it going and checking stuff we'd be able to see in some cases it would avoid using an in-use object. Uh, it'll depend when it goes and scores. Uh, a little bit that'll be dependent upon the, the timing that they're running at. So if they're doing things at similar times, so in this case, yep, one's found uh, an object. So the bookshelf on the left is already in use. So it's going to skip using that. So you can see that's because one's heading over to that. So that's good. We've got our setup for our Blackboard. Now this is something where if we wanted to, um, those things like those objects in use, that's a great example where if we found we were hitting performance issues with how often that was being accessed or the speed for that, we could set that up as its own dedicated thing within the Blackboard. So I think Blackboards are really handy and I think the area where things can go wrong with them is if you have them be too generic or too specific. So I like going for a bit of a hybrid approach. So where we can have a whole bunch of stuff that is uh, specific types that we store in an easy to access way. And we also have built in support for generic things, but we then only go and use that when we absolutely need it. And what we do is we keep an eye on that. And if we find we're doing a lot of generic access, then we can actually go and simplify that. We can go and make it so that it's uh, not doing all of those uh, particular setups with that. We can set up some specific ones for it to optimize it. Um, so that's a really sort of key thing there for that. Now, the interaction set filtering that we were doing there, the reason it was at times using the same thing is this, we're going to actually change that over to a game object. And the reason we want to do that is interaction.game object, because by checking if it's the same interaction, we're only filtering out ones performing a particular interaction. We're not filtering out the performing of uh, the same one. So we're going to go game object like that. And we'll be able to go value to a game object. So not much of a change, but it just means that the filtering happens on the actual uh, game object level. So something won't go and try and perform different interactions at the same object because we're filtering on interaction. That was why that was happening. And it could you both use the same the TV at the same point in time. So now that won't be able to happen. And a fairly easy change. Like that's the avenge with having that generic one there really, really easy to make a, a change so that everything is then held unique um, and is not being able to interact with the same object there. So this is something where dive on in and experiment with this. We've got a lot of pieces now where you could add additional things into the Blackboard. The Blackboards have been set up so that they are a modular thing that you can just throw into any of your own projects and use that with any of your own AIs. We've got a lot of supported types there. Uh, and so they can go and be working with that for sort of any things that you might be needing there. Thanks folks, hope you found the video interesting and helpful. If you did, check in the like and subscribe.
really helps out, it's really appreciated. If you've got any questions, chuck in a comment below. If you're looking for the code for the project, that is available up on GitHub, and there is a link to that in the description below. You can use that in any of your own projects. If you're looking for more videos in different areas, I've also put in a link to video archive there, uh, where I've got all of the videos listed, and you can be doing a bit of a search based upon keywords, terms like of that, to try and track down stuff. And if you're looking for other ways to support the channel, then I do have a Patreon, and there is a link to that in the description below. But until next time, 